Hey guys, it's Braid Bamboo here. And this week I have a really great topic to share with you. It's the 80, well, it's my 80, 20 rule about selecting tech without going into overwhelm. Now, I love, love, love technology. If you have followed me, you know that I used to work in the telco industry back when it was cool, when Nokia released the little tiny three series phones. I've always embraced technology and I think it is an amazing way that we are moving our world forward. I recently did a blog about certainty is the new uncertainty and technology certainly contributes to the uncertainty that some of us feel. But if you're like me, you probably want to buy a bucket of technology and you've probably got a whole part of it that you never use. I'm so guilty of this. I have so many apps and software that I've bought and I've really, really intended to get some great use out of them, but they're kind of sitting in my back drawer. And usually I try to remember to delete them, but every now and then one pops up on my credit card and I go, oh my goodness, I forgot that I had that. So my first tip is keep a registry of all the tech that you are buying. I simply use a Google spreadsheet now in Google Docs in my G Drive and I have the app that I've purchased, I have a link to the site, I have the passwords and the date that I did it, the price that I paid and if it's an auto renew or if it's a once off payment. So it's really important to keep track of this. If I don't put it in there, I end up having a whole pile of stuff. I can't even remember what it's used for. One of my favorite sites is AppSumo, and I have been so, so guilty of buying stuff off AppSumo, and my VA just gives me a slap and says, stop, we can't use it. But I get so excited by technology, and I'm really wanting to use it. So AppSumo, we'll put a link in the show notes here, but you know, AppSumo has had a lot of my money go to it. And honestly, I've probably only used... I'm going to talk about 80-20, so probably only 20% of them, and that's probably the truth, only 20% of them are continuously used, but they're so cheap, I kind of justify it by saying that it's uh, if it doesn't work, it's not a big cost, but it does add up, and sometimes I just think to myself, what was I thinking? There are some tools that I love, love, love at the moment. If you are doing any digital marketing, I love Hunter IO. It's a way of finding email addresses. Um, I have no affiliate for that. We'll put that uh, in the show notes, but I really love using that to find the right people to connect with. I love using that tool. It's really helped me to connect with the right sort of people. And you know me, I'm all about personalization and real connections with people. Um, there is another tool that I absolutely love. It's called Techmatics. I do have an affiliate link for that. I have moved all of my CRM from, I was with another brand. I won't say that brand, but it was okay. Uh, and it did a lot of stuff that we needed, but Techmatics is owned by a friend of mine, Sarah Cordner. I hope you're watching, Sarah. And I, uh, I love it. I just love it. It does everything. My team love it. And it really condenses things down into one app. So half the reason most of my app sumo stuff is redundant because Techmatics does it all. And the other thing I'm loving, loving, loving at the moment is warm up email. Uh, if you do any email marketing campaigns, you probably know that a lot of your stuff is going into spam, but warm up email. I love it. It really warms up your email and ensures that uh, your, your emails don't end up in spam. Because if you're paying for your emails with your email service provider, and they're going to spam, it's a lot of money wasted. But if you use Techmatics, it would be unlimited. So that's another little plug for Techmatics. But getting back to my original point, it's the 80-20 rule. I really want you to think about what is going to serve you and your business to be make it easier for you to connect with your customers. And that is ultimately what technology is there to do. So really think about how is this piece of technology going to serve me? And am I going to use it? Because not only do you have to use it, but you also have, have to invest time on learning how to use it. And that takes up your time. So think about, am I investing my time learning this new product or program and implementing it in my business? Is that a great investment of my time? And generally, when you put it through the 80-20 test, am I going to get 80% of my revenue from this stuff? 
The answer is generally no. And as much, much, much as I want to buy tech and I want to use new tech, I really have to dial back. Unless you're a big company and you have a lot of people doing a lot of very specialized tasks, the odds are you don't need as much as you think. So I hope you found this useful. Please, if you do nothing else, create your spreadsheet of all the tech that you use and the dates that um, they renew and what you paid for it and, and what it does. I put a little note down, it does this. It will make your life so much easier. And if you're like me, you won't have random tech charges popping up on your credit card sometime in 12 months from now. So I hope you love this tip. Please jump onto my website, braithbankin.com. I have got buckets of free stuff to help you grow your small but mighty business. I hope to see you on the inside.